what's up everybody welcome back to exotic astrology again and today we are back again to discuss on the different tattvas of planets the components the compositions the elements of what a planet is fundamentally we discussed about fire agni tattva which is known as the typical three malefics sun mars and ketu and we also discussed why they are known as malefics and if you have not watched that video then please go and watch otherwise you may feel oh my god what is this person talking and today we will discuss on vayu tattva air <laughs> we will see what air is what is airy planets and what happens when who are these airy planets and what happens when planets sit in air signs all right there you go if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it and if you like this video after watching till the end of course <laughs> then click the thumbs up and my new website is ready if you want a personal consultation from me then the link to the website is there down below in the description and then go there and book an appointment with me all right before i begin as i say god is there with you all the time just look to him and he will help you to understand what is vayu tattva <laughs> all right so what is vayu basically vayu basically represents air vayu represents the wind it is the flow basically what keeps flowing what do you what what comes to your mind when you say anything is flowing it is the mind actually when i say the mind i am not talking of the moon here moon is not a, a, a airy planet it is a watery planet we will discuss on jala tattva later but when i am saying mind i mean desires as the shrimad bhagavatam says manorathe na sati dhavato bahi a person a materialistic person who is engrossed in the activities of this world in many many sinful activities his mind is like manoratha na sati he is getting asakti asakti means attachment what is manoratha manoratha is the chariot of the mind <laughs> beautiful analogy this is i always keep telling this manorathe na sati dhavato bhai mean that means when he is he or she is in the chariot of the mind by that the mind takes him to different places to the today the mind is taking him to the place of this girl tomorrow another girl and then there's another girl <laughs> then the mind tells him okay maybe india is a good place but maybe los angeles is better <laughs> maybe france is better maybe germany is better maybe it's not great to marry a indian girl it's great to marry somebody from a foreign religion or from a foreign country or different caste creed or maybe it's not good to buy a car with man of which is manufactured in india maybe you should buy a rolls royce manufactured in somewhere great britain <laughs> now all the mind may say okay it's not good you should not stay with this person you should stay with that person oh no 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 you should go back to that person <laughs> oh no 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 the other one was good this one is not that great actually the first the first partner which i had he was very good she was excellent so these these are typical traits of a materialistic person who is engrossed in materialistic desires that is why the chariot of the mind takes him to different places today he takes him to the casino where he goes and wastes money tomorrow he may visit a prostitute or the next day he may visit his relatives <laughs> or the next day he may visit uh, his sister the next day he may go to job the next day he may 
he may sit in the university or the next day he may be watching a video on astrology like you are watching <laughs> or he may start uh, reading the bhagavad gita also or the quran or the bible or he may start chanting some mantra either of these things he can do or he may get married or he may get divorced so basically the mind manoratha means the chariot of the mind today the mind keep because the mind is like the monkey monkeys always hop from one place to other it keeps jumping from this place to that place today i like this today i like vanilla ice cream tomorrow i like chocolate ice cream or oh, suddenly i don't like vanilla or chocolate i am in love with raspberry ice cream as in german you say strawberry is known as ed beer <laughs> so i love ed beer ice cream and tomorrow i don't like ice cream at all tomorrow suddenly i start liking maybe indian sweets so basically these are the desires which torment the living entity the soul that is what lord krishna says in the gita that manasya sthani indriyani prakriti sthani karshati the desires are always tormenting <laughs> lord krishna was asked this question by arjuna that my dear krishna what is it that entangles the soul what is it that forces a good person who is trying to control himself to act in ways which are devious then lord krishna says kamesha kodesha rajo guna samud bhava mahashano mahapapma vidhye namiha vairinam my dear arjuna it is lust only that transforms into wrath kama esha krodha esha kama is desire krodha is anger rajoguna samudbhava rajoguna means it ignites fire inside us fire means the fire of desire mahashano mahapapma vidhyanam hi vairinam this is the most deadliest enemy of the mankind lord krishna is certifying <laughs> so what happens is with the vayu tatva planets oh yes i forgot to say which planets come under vayu tatva sorry <laughs> saturn and rahu are vayu tatva planets that is why they are known as the most malefic they are the worst of the malefics they are the most terrible malefics saturn and rahu and whenever saturn rahu are conjunct in any horoscope that is known as shrapit yoga we will not discuss about that now but we are discussing about the component of vayu here so what happens where it starts the planet sun which is the soul it gets debilitated in the sign of libra which is the original seventh house of the zodiac which is also a air sign so that shows whenever sun is in libra that the living entity who is the original part and parcel as lord krishna says in the gita that mama evamsho jiva loke jiva bhuta sanatana mama evamsho jiva loke jiva bhuta sanatana that living entity is eternally my part and parcel when he comes into libra which is what the sign ruled by venus original seventh house seventh house of sexuality of desire of kama lust acquisition basically seventh house is not the house of sexuality only it is the house of desire any desire you have is the seventh house that is why i had made a video that where lord krishna says that whatever state of being one remembers at the time of death oh dear son of kunti in that state he shall attain without fail that means whenever you are leaving your body which everybody will leave one day all of us right nobody is immortal here that time whatever is there in your head in your mind in your desires that pull that state you shall attain without fail lord krishna is certifying without fail <laughs> so that means 
if you have god at in your mind that time then you will obtain god you will not return back to this material world you will go back to the spiritual world but if you are thinking of your wife then maybe you may take birth as a lady that happens or if you are thinking of your husband because these two are the strongest attachments because you spend most of the time with either your wife or with your husband or maybe you are thinking of your son or your daughter their broken words papa mama <laughs> then you may come as their son or as their daughter it happens so many times people take birth as uh, i mean i mean in their own lineage people take birth that can be easily said from somebody's horoscope that were you an ancestor of your family that means the attachment was so deep that you had to come down again to live in the same family there you see how the soul suffers he is tormented always so therefore seventh house is the original house of desire and when sun the atma it comes there it gets debilitated that means what it loses all its power it loses all its good qualities the more somebody is indulging in libra the more it's like he is dying because that is where sun gets debilitated and because because of this they always have a hard time i am not talking of sun in libra people here i am not talking of october 15 to november 15 the very fact that we have taken birth proves that our sun is in libra <laughs> oh my god what did i just say yes everybody has their sun in libra irrespective of wherever your sun is even if it is exalted in aries the very fact that we are here it means libra has enchanted us and when the soul comes it gets debilitated which means we lose the connection to god because seventh house is the sun where the sun uh, is the house where the sun sets that means it is directly opposite of sunrise where in the first house where the sun rises that means what you are sitting in a place where you cannot see the sun sun is what divine wisdom light that you cannot see that's why it gets debilitated that is why the sun suffers i am not talking of sun in libra here do not make this video on sun and libra i am just simply talking of how uh, air affects us so that's why the kama houses are there that 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 is the meaning of the kama houses and if you talk of uh, vayu tattva planets like saturn and rahu come under this and why are they called malefics if you want to understand why saturn and rahu are called malefics you have to understand this the meaning of vayu first vayu is desire and therefore when you have lots of desires you have to work very hard in this world you can never be peaceful your happiness is extinguished completely because the moment you have something you always want something else because lord krishna also says in the gita ब्रह्मभूत प्रसन्नात्मा न सोचति न कांक्षति समा सर्वेशु भूतेशु मद्भक्ति लभते परा ब्रह्मभूत प्रसन्नात्मा न सोचति न कांक्षति ब्रह्मभूत इज वन हु इज सिचुएटेड इन ट्रांसेंडेंस न सोचति न कांक्षति ही डजन हैव दीज टू ट्रेट्स सोचति कांक्षति सोचना akanksha these two things which means the person does not hanker or lament basically if you see in the mundane society the people are doing either of the two things you see anybody you see your father you see your mother you see your uh, wife your husband your boyfriend your girlfriend your friend your servant your boss anybody i am just saying a materialistic person is characterized by two traits one two <laughs> they are hankering and lamenting what is hankering hankering means staying in the past, staying in the future in the what is going to happen 
oh my god i want this oh my god i want to go abroad oh my god i want a promotion oh my god i want this girl oh my god i want this boy oh my god i want him oh my god i want her <laughs> then lamentation oh my god i lost this girl oh my god i lost this man oh my god i lost this job oh my god this is finished oh my god my whole house is destroyed either they will be hankering or lamenting or both <laughs> so a materialistic person is characterized by these two traits and therefore lord krishna says brahma bhuta prasanna atma that means one who is situated in brahma bhuta which is, which is transcendence na sochati na kankshati brahma bhuta prasanna atma means he is very happy one who does not hanker or lament that means vayu is not troubling him anymore the element of air does not trouble him anymore because wherever air moves there's disturbance do you see because whenever air is moving there's a lot of disturbance things are moving here there so his mind is very calm his mind is very peaceful sama sarveshu bhuteshu mad bhaktim labhate param in that state he attains me <laughs> and that is a prerequisite for spirituality if your mind is not calm and you you are thinking that you will advance spiritually then we'll get well soon <laughs> that's a uh, illusion which will never materialize even in a thousand lifetimes that's what lord krishna is telling in that state he will attain me that means that is the state where your spiritual life begins that your mind has to be calm because that is paramatma stage paramatma stage means you realize god inside your heart the 400 vishnu form is revealed to you when the mind is completely calm of course that's a very high stage we are not talking of general public here but i am just saying this this is what the philosophy is all right and then what happens because there's rahu rahu is the original ruler of the 11th house what is 11th house 11th house is the house of desire and it is also the house of associations network circles yes 11th house the most famous the most popular the most talked house in astrology everybody is obsessed oh my god how many planets are there in my 11th house oh my god he has jupiter oh my god he has saturn oh my god there's venus <laughs> there you go so what happens rahu is that obsession which eclipses the sun and moon what is the meaning of the eclipse that the sun and moon which represents the atma and the manas rahu clouds it we cannot see ourselves we think that we are this body like i am the husband of this girl i am the wife of this man or i am studying in this university i am doing this i am doing that but actually none of that that is true because you are actually connected to god and because you are connected to god and you have lost it that connection that is why you are feeling like that that oh this is mine that is hers i am his she is mine <laughs> and then these dynamics of uh, vayu comes into picture and what is saturn saturn is the ruler of the 10th house of capricorn original 10th sign of the zodiac belt and also it rules aquarius rahu also rules aquarius So what happens when you have this truckload of desires you keep working you keep working 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 <laughs> You have to work till you foam in the mouth that is what happens when Saturn comes <laughs> So Saturn is telling if you have desires you have to work otherwise I will not give you to the degree you work to that degree your desires will be fulfilled Now I am not saying that is good or bad I am just saying why they are called malefics people always say saturn rahu are malefics my god why they are called malefics do you know the reason this is the reason because they rule the 10th house and the 11th house that is the root cause of all problems of the horoscope because when it, whenever it comes to the 10th house you try to prove to the world that yes 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 i can do something now i'm not saying that is bad what i'm saying is the soul gets entangled in all this that is why that is considered to be difficult the 10th house and the 11th house and that is why the ruler 
the rulers of these two signs are the most dreaded worst malefics all right that is it from my side if you have any questions queries or comments then let me know in the comment section and if you want a consultation then the link to my website is below please go and book there and mail me according okay until next time wish you good luck with your airy malefics <laughs> i hope you find some right desires to cultivate all right that is it from my side good night bye bye see you